Hey everyone, welcome back. I hope everybody is doing well out there. My name is Andy, and I love to talk about fun and interesting things to do around Florida. So I was recently reading about the seven natural wonders of the world, and I started thinking about which Florida places I personally might include if there were a seven natural wonders of Florida. I wanted to include places that are unique, inspiring, or maybe even have some kind of similarity to the official wonders of the world. And if you're not familiar with them or just need a refresher, the seven natural wonders of the world are the Aurora Borealis, the Grand Canyon, the Great Barrier Reef, the Harbor of Rio de Janeiro, Mount Everest, Paracutan Volcano in Mexico, and Victoria Falls. This is part one of a two-part series. The follow-up to this will be the seven man-made wonders of Florida. So here's my list and a little bit about each place. I've actually been to all of these except for one, and that one will be pretty obvious since it's a place I really have no desire to ever go to. And as a reminder, this isn't necessarily the correct list, it's just my list. If you have a favorite place that you think is a natural wonder of Florida, let me and everybody else know about it in the comments. I'd love to see what you all think about this. All right, so in no particular order, let's go. The Florida Reef. The Florida Reef is the only living coral barrier reef in the continental United States and is actually the third largest coral barrier reef system in the world after Australia's Great Barrier Reef, one of the original wonders of the world, and the Belize Barrier Reef. It runs parallel to the Florida Keys and it's about 4 miles wide and 170 miles long. That's roughly from about Biscayne Bay National Park in Miami to Dry Tortugas National Park just off of Key West. So that's two national parks in one reef system. Each of those parks could have easily made it to a list like this, but they're both part of the Florida Reef. And John Pennekamp Coral Reef State Park is also part of the Florida Reef. John Pennekamp is a really popular park for scuba diving, snorkeling, kayaking, and lots of water sports. And you might know it as the place where that famous underwater Jesus statue, Christ of the Abyss, is located. It was actually created in Italy and placed here in 1965. It sits in about 25 feet of water, about 9 miles off the coast of Key Largo, and it weighs a total of 9 tons. The Florida Reef is considered a world-class diving destination that attracts divers from around the world. A lot of it is because it's really easy to reach from South Florida and the Keys, which are big tourist destinations of their own. So it's a pretty easy jaunt for divers to come on down to the Keys and see this reef. But like lots of other reefs around the world, it's kind of struggling these days. It's a complicated issue, but threats from pollution, sunscreen, overfishing, microplastics, coral diseases and coral bleaching, or a combination of all of the above, are causing this reef to deteriorate and decline a lot. Some parts of the reef have actually seen the coral decline by as much as 90% since the 80s. But there's some hopeful news because marine biologists are kind of starting to figure out some of the things that are hurting the coral and some ways that we can help. One little thing that you or I can do if you ever come down here to visit this or really any reef is using reef safe sunscreen or one of those long sleeve rash guards to protect yourself from the sun. It'll keep you cool because it's a very thin light material, but it will also keep the sun off of you. And that's the direction a lot of fishermen are going in now these days to protect the waters. And you'll see a lot of guys dressed like this on the water now. The whole point of sunscreen is to protect our skin from the harmful UV rays of the sun, but it slowly washes off in the water and will accumulate on the coral in the reef. Coral needs sunlight to thrive and the chemicals in sunscreen that protect your skin from the sun are also keeping the full spectrum of the sun from being absorbed by the coral. Now just imagine all the thousands of people who come down here to the Florida Keys to spend some time on the water and you can see how this can put a lot of stress on the reef. Anyway, that's just a little sidebar public service announcement on behalf of the reef and all the sea life down there that depend on it so we can help protect it. Protecting your skin from the sun is important, but just look out for the reef safe sunscreen if you're ever coming down here. The Florida Reef is the third largest in the world and it's something we really should protect for the future. Florida's underwater cave system. 
Under the ground all over Northwest Florida, there is a huge hidden world of underwater caves winding through the porous limestone aquifer. A lot of these caves feed water to Florida's beautiful clear springs too. The cave system under Rainbow River alone is estimated to be at least 20 miles long, and there are underwater cave systems all over the state, usually feeding the springs from the underground aquifers. But this is the place that, for me at least, is better left to be seen by those who know what they're doing. Cave diving is really dangerous. The Eagle's Nest is a cave near Wikiwachi that in particular is considered to be the most extreme cave dive in the world. It's 310 feet below the surface and has been nicknamed the Mount Everest of scuba diving. And this is that one place on the list that I was talking about earlier that I have absolutely no desire to ever see myself and no intention on ever visiting. I'm actually a certified diver, but doing this is a, is a hard no from me. I'm perfectly happy to sit here and watch some of the cool videos that cave divers have shot and just live vicariously through them. And before I move on to the next one, I wanted to add a little honorable mention here that I almost considered for the list, and that's Florida Cavern State Park. That's in Mariana, Florida, in the Panhandle, and it's the largest dry cave in Florida. A lot of people don't even know there are caves in Florida that you can visit, and this is right here in the Panhandle. It's a really cool place to visit. It's definitely worth seeing if you're ever up that way. There's guided tours available, and it's very much a classic cave with all the classic cave features like stalactites, stalagmites, bats, and some really cool cave lighting down there too. Venice Beach, Florida, the shark tooth capital of the world. At its surface, there's nothing particularly noteworthy about Venice Beach. It's a perfectly nice Gulf Coast beach about 18 miles south of Sarasota on the west coast. The sand is a bit more coarse than other beaches on the west coast, and it's not particularly crowded or touristy. It's just a nice place to spend a day. But Venice, Florida is known as the shark tooth capital of the world for the really endless number of fossilized shark teeth that are found in the sand here. I think it's just a wonder that after all these years of people going to this beach, day after day looking for teeth in the sand, and they just keep turning up. If you're hunting for teeth here, you're almost guaranteed to come back with at least one tooth. And shark tooth hunting is a really fun activity. You will need some kind of sand sifter and a keen eye to find them, but it's a really addictive activity and it's kind of zen-like to go out here and sift in the sand to find a few really unique and free souvenirs to take home. And if you're really lucky, you may even be one of those who finds a megalodon or great white tooth. But what is it about this particular beach that causes so many shark teeth to wash up in the sand? I mean, the ocean is a big place, right? The whole thing is surrounded by beaches and there are sharks everywhere in it. So why Venice? Why are there so many teeth here all the time? Back in prehistoric times, the land that is now Florida was submerged under the ocean. And for millions and millions of years, the seas over the land that would eventually become Florida was home to shark species like mako sharks, bulls, lemon sharks, great whites, tiger sharks, and the massive but now extinct megalodon. One shark will lose thousands of teeth in its lifetime, so over millions of years and billions of sharks, that's a lot of shark teeth fossils to build up in one spot. The number of them down there is just mind-boggling. And the short and simple explanation is that Venice Beach sits along a gentle slope of the coast with no real sharp drop-off, so a layer of shark teeth fossils just offshore is gradually eroded away and constantly brought onto the shore. Shark teeth can theoretically be found all over Florida, but the unique geology and surf here at Venice Beach create like perfect conditions for finding shark's teeth and other fossils in the sand almost all the time. You can find them all over Venice, but Casperson Beach in particular is considered the best spot. That is considered the true shark tooth capital of the world. The Crystal River Wildlife Refuge Crystal River is home to the only national wildlife refuge in the United States specifically created to protect the habitat of Florida's beloved official marine mammal, the Florida manatee. The area on Florida's west coast near the town of Crystal River is a vast collection of wetlands, waterways, and crystal clear springs that's also one of the best places in the world to see manatees in their natural habitat. Manatee tours are a really popular attraction around here 
with winter being the best time of the year to see them. The spring-fed waters here stay just warm enough for manatees to be comfortable in the winter, so they come here to gather in huge numbers. And seeing a manatee in person is always a memorable experience, but seeing so many of them gather together in the turquoise springs is just unforgettable. The best-selling book, 1,000 Places to See Before You Die, listed Three Sisters Springs here as one of those places. of Florida's natural crystal clear freshwater springs could be considered a Florida natural wonder on their own, but this region of Florida is full of them. Three Sisters Springs, Wikiwachi Springs, Hunter Springs, and Homosassa Springs are all in this area and all worth a visit on their own. Payne's Prairie Preserve State Park. Payne's Prairie Preserve State Park is a vast savanna wilderness area in North Florida near Gainesville that's the most biodiverse state park in Florida. If you've ever driven on I-75 through North Florida and run across that part where the highway cuts through like a wide open landscape just south of Gainesville, you just drove through Payne's Prairie. Payne's Prairie is Florida's first state preserve area and has been designated as a national natural landmark. It's home to over 300 species of birds as well as all the other Florida usuals like alligators, deer, and even bears. But the thing that will blow the minds of a lot of visitors to Payne's Prairie is the sight of wild roaming bison and wild horses. Did you even know that there are wild bison in Florida? A lot of people didn't. And that's an animal that most of us associate with places like Wyoming and North Dakota but you can see them here at Payne's Prairie. Bison are actually a native species to Florida, but European settlers came back in here and kind of hunted them to extinction. So in 1975, a small handful of them were reintroduced to the park, and by now they've established a pretty good herd of about 50 to 60 bison. A really good spot to look for them is at the observation tower at the visitor center. Gives you a really good panoramic view of the entire place, but bring some binoculars or a camera with a good zoom lens and you'll have the best shot at seeing them. Devil's Den Prehistoric Spring. If you're intrigued by the idea of cave diving, but you're not really interested in the parts that might involve claustrophobia or the potential of getting lost in a pitch black, deep underwater cave with a limited supply of oxygen strapped to your back, then keep watching. This one's for you. Devil's Den in Williston gives the rest of us the chance to experience scuba diving, snorkeling, or swimming in an underground cavern, but with plenty of that precious oxygen overhead and even a little bit of sunlight seeping in. Devil's Den is what's known as a karst window, basically a collapsed sinkhole over an underground spring that exposes the water below to a large open cavern. So this place is kind of like a combination of two places on this list. A clear Florida spring that just happens to be underground. And you can come visit this place without any special cave diving training or even be scuba certified if you just want to snorkel here. The spring is 72 degrees all year round and goes to a depth of 54 feet. And there's a little stairway that takes you down into the cave down to a platform right in the middle of the spring but you have to either be snorkeling or scuba diving to enter the cave. They won't just let you go down there to see it, and this is a really popular spot in the summer, so you might want to call ahead to plan your perfect time to visit. It got its spooky name, Devil's Den, because on cold winter days, steam can be seen rising from it, and early settlers to the area saw that and thought it must be some kind of chimney to the underworld. But instead, it's just a beautiful and rare example of an underground spring that's open to all and a true Florida natural wonder. And finally, I think we all knew this one was coming from the start, the Everglades. 
The Everglades is a vast tropical wetland in the southern portion of Florida, known by most for its wide open vistas and incredible diversity of wildlife. The Everglades is actually a wide, slow moving river of marsh and sawgrass covering about 4,500 square miles of South Florida. But the system actually begins up in central Florida at Lake Kissimmee near Orlando. From that lake, water flows south down the Kissimmee River to Lake Okeechobee. Lake Okeechobee, as we all know, is huge but shallow. It only has a max depth of like 12 feet. So water will flow out of that lake during the wet summer months, creating the Everglades. It's a 100 mile long, 60 mile wide river of grass. It slowly flows south to the mangrove estuaries of the Gulf of Mexico and Florida Bay at the southern tip of the state. It's the only ecosystem like this anywhere on Earth, and it's one of the largest wilderness areas east of the Mississippi. It's home to countless species of birds and plants, alligators, crocodiles, panthers, bears, and now, unfortunately, pythons and iguanas. And fun fact, it's the only place in the entire world where both alligators and crocodiles will live together in the same habitat. The Everglades are our unique habitat and there is nothing else like this place anywhere in the world. No other place combines a subtropical climate, a broad shallow river, and a stunning diversity of plants and animals into such a complex ecosystem. You can see this place yourself by visiting Everglades National Park, but my personal favorite way to do it is to come down and see it by airboat. There's a lot of airboat tour operators right there on US 41, also called the Tamiami Trail, that's not too far from Miami. If you do decide to do this, I would personally recommend Everglades Safari Park. I went on an airboat tour with them a few years ago and it was a lot of fun, a really memorable experience with a great guide. And they usually have some pretty good Groupon deals out there too. If I find one, I will link that to the description so you can save some money if you decide to do that. So those are my own personal picks for the seven natural wonders of Florida. Let me know in the comments if there's one that you would have included. I'm always interested in learning about great places to visit around the state. I'll leave links in the description to more information on all these places. And as always, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll know when I upload another video about fun and interesting things to do around Florida.